Hello, hello, back again. Today we make a series of nice videos. This one is the first one, or you can look one of your interest. It's about sound adjustment, and it's very often that here in Cremona people show up or ask me if I could adjust their violin or their instrument, viola, cello, double bass. And it seems a little bit that most of the people do not exactly know what matters what. Now to make, to clear up a little bit, just as a beginning short introduction, it's very important that all the components, bridge, sound post, bass bar, neck certainly, all are perfectly fitted. Otherwise, some movements of those components, while we adjust the sound, will not react how it should be. Okay? Now, today we focus on the sound post, on purpose, so it makes the whole thing a little bit easier. And we just suppose that everything is in its final perfect position. Okay? Just to get started, we need to make a small drawing. We, everything which is correct and stable, we make green. And so here we have a, a thin line, which is like mostly the joint, but it's the center line of the instrument. I know you cannot see it, but that's for purpose. And now we design here let's say so we have here now our feet of the bridge okay and uh, it's not easy to design here on a whiteboard and it's also it should be all a nice line okay anyhow this is the bridge here is the fingerboard okay just to, for your reference okay now inside we have on one side we have the Base bar inside the instrument. Okay, it's not so far away from the fingerboard, but it's fine. We just make it like this here, so then it's uh, getting a little bit more realistic. This stands for being the fingerboard, and these are the bridge feet. Inside the instrument, there is the base bar, and the distance is determining very much where the sound post of the other side inside is, which connects top and back. So in my instruments, if you want to see if it's original Edgar violin, you look inside and you will see there is a pencil line inside drawn on the instrument. I even draw the idle bridge position, which is somewhere a third of the um, feet here. And then it goes to the F-hole where these notches are, yeah? So, if you measure now, to do the whole thing at home, or you could as a violin maker do it, the best way is that you certainly have my sound adjustment kit. Inside here, there are all my tools, which I use, and I just collected them, and I even have a roll meter, okay? I think, I don't even remember for how much I sell this one, I think 99, huh? And you just have to specify violin or cello and then you get the violin sound post setter or the cello sound post setter. Yeah? So I measure on the upper edge of the, of the top, I measure down and where this corner of the, finger, of, of the bridge is, it should be 19.6 and let's say 4. Okay, now if, we, if you look at this and you say that what, what the measurement, Nine, uh, 19, 19.64 is the measurement all the way to the low corner of the bridge, okay? This measurement is because the diapason is 19.5 and then I take a third of the, of the thickness of the bridge and that is exactly this 1.4 millimeters because the bridge in my case for a violin is 4.2 and I don't accept a tenth more or less, okay? I just make things very easy for you. You make it this way or you can forget it. And the meter here is very important. Mine 
are all perfect. Most of the meters nowadays are not precise enough, okay? Very good. Once you have that, inside, and you can get a, a small mirror, which is inside, I think it's even branded at Goros, something like this, wow, you know? You go inside and then you can look if everything is nice. And then I have some very small jigs, you will see later on. I can go inside on one side and then I go in the other side, I touch against the sound post and then I see exactly if the distance is the same, right? If now everything is perfect and the same, the instrument should sound great. Now it's a matter of fact that you put everything together and there is no instrument from the first moment will sound great and climate changing and things like this are moving a little bit this tiny sound post inside, okay? So now we have here the sound post along this edge along this imaginary line, which is just the opposite of the base bar, okay, the outside line of the base bar, and this is the outside line of the sound post. I have to sign like this because the grain is like this, the grain of the top is like this, right? And the idle distance here is how I usually always give in some additional other videos. Don't remember now the video number, 13, 5, something like this. If you could measure the th thickness of your top, if you're a violin maker, you know it exactly how much it is. In my case, it's mostly three millimeters. It's from here to the sound post, exactly the same distance. So if the top is three millimeters, you make it for beginning, for starting point, three millimeters. Put the sound post there, straight down to the, to the back, and then you listen, right? And that's what we are going to do, and we listen to. A violin which I made. I took mine because I did everything so I know that everything is acting how it should be and in case it doesn't you will see Edgar becoming red like this here. Okay? Otherwise if everything goes good I will become green like this one. Anyhow, we have here today Lena Yogoyama and she will play my violin. Just a very short, no concert, we just want to listen how it sounds if the E string is not strong enough, like maybe in your case. And then I show you what I do in order that the E string becomes stronger. And that's something you can do yourself, okay? Of course, you have to, it's easier for you if you have my sound adjustment kit with all the nice things inside and then you have all the tools and you can just repeat it at home, okay? This is obvious. small bird sitting there. <laughs> small small E, yeah? And now we will make it stronger. Hmm? So here out of this box I have already taken one of these cables here and I have connected it. It's all separately and so you have to attach it together and then one of these plugs for the iPhone or another cell phone, you put it into the plug and then you have some light, okay? I usually on a violin, I no need to illuminate so much, it's just too bright for me, so I just attach it on the, the, the F-hole and I can look inside, okay? Now, the key point is that I will move the sound post towards the bridge. And I do that on the upper side, on the top, and on the lower side, on the, um, on the back. So now I put this here on the F-hole, and with this sound post setter, a violin sound post setter, I go into the F-hole, okay? And then I give on the lower side, 
and on the higher side some hips. If it doesn't move because it's fitted too well, like in my case, then I first need to watch with my mirror where it is exactly and I will move it a little bit more tick, 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 on the upper side towards the bridge. Let me see. It makes a lot of noise because the whole body is actually moving a lot and uh, makes a lot of noise and is moving very little. Just start slowly, slowly bef before you get a little bit the sensibility how much you have to push. Now I get, went like, let's say for me, in my mind, halfway and we listen what Lena says, how she likes it, okay? say perfect right I hope you enjoyed this one hmm? see you next time and don't forget to purchase the sound adjustment kit and you can do the same thing at home see you next time ciao 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 ciao